Hello everybody and welcome to November. Uh, for this month, and since I have missed pretty much every month since the summertime, I believe, I figured I'd do something a little different. This is something I've been wanting to work on for about a year or so, is fixing up my original Dreamcast from my childhood. And as you may have noticed, this is off. I took it apart to kind of clean it out and look at it uh, about a week or so ago, and I didn't bother putting it all the way back on because I accidentally assembled everything that goes on top of this, and I knew I was going to do this video anyway. So there was a few issues I had with my Dreamcast. One, the light wasn't working anymore. Two, for some reason the controller ports were acting weird. And then three, it has the one issue that everybody at this point should have, the CMOS battery is dead. So I plan to try to fix all these things. Fortunately, when I took it apart, the little LED light started working again when I reassembled it, so I'm glad about that. The GD-ROM is still working fine, so I'm not concerned about that or putting a GDMU in it at all. And I have no real interest in modding the original one from my childhood. I want to get it to function relatively, except for one exception. What I want to do is replace the CMOS battery with this. It's a little kit where it makes an actual CMOS mount, so every time you have an issue, just pop in a regular CMOS battery instead of soldering one in and out. Fortunately, it came with this little guide here, and I have an idea where all the parts are. So instead of doing one of my regular inventories of my collection, since I think I've only collected one game this whole year, or I might actually reconsider that, since I don't think I did one last year at all, we're going to go and repair my original Dreamcast. I apologize for some of the lighting. It's kind of hard for me to set up lighting in this room. I also decided to work on this instead of my coffee table, since it's cramped, but we're going to use a little bit of overkill. I got an iFixit kit this year. It's $69, nice. And we're going to take it apart first fully. That's the first step before I take that out, and then we're going to resolder that board. So this is pretty easy. All you need really is a Phillips head screw. I already pulled out the dial-up modem. Um, there's no need to put that back in at all really, but there are four screws on the bottom first at all four corners. This one's the easiest to get out. So here's the part I'm going to directly work on. This is the controller board. We're going to pull that out. Here is the fan, which is kind of interesting. The Dreamcast has a few different quote-unquote revisions, but most of the ones I've had is either a 1, and I did own a 0 for a little bit, but I was low on money. So, the one I have has an actual metal heatsink and fan, but I've seen other ones with the exact model and revision number have a plastic one. Here is the power supply. Here is the GD-ROM reader. This does not use standard CDs technically. There's the power button, and then here's the controller. So we're going to pop this boy out. Then there you have it, that's the controller board. I don't think these vary too much between revisions. So what we're going to do is we're going to desolder the dead CMOS that originally came in it when it was manufactured in 1998. And then we're going to remove this resistor, the capacitor, and the ohm, and we're going to replace those. Because the kit I got was actually cheaper than everything else, and it has all those parts. This is a relatively easy soldering job, so if you're not that experienced, you should be good at doing it. Figured I'd just zoom in and show you guys that it has the katana code name on there and then the Sega on the board. Made in Japan. Since I want to put that part back on and I have this open recording anyway, I figured I'd do a full teardown and kind of time lapse over it.
let's look at the funk. Could you stop playing with that radio, Lord? I'm trying to get to sleep. <laughs> Then there you have it, there's the Dreamcast main board. One thing that's definitely confused me about this ever since the first time I opened it up is what this is supposed to do. I don't know if it's supposed to help distribute heat or whatever, but it looks like there's some kind of cable connected from the main board that leads to these pipes or whatever, to the heat sink pipes. So if anybody knows what that's supposed to actually do, please just leave me a comment, let me know. And I believe all the screws are gone, so I should be able to safely lift out the actual main board. This is the actual main board of the Dreamcast. Like I've already stated, there's the heat sink. We'll set it over on this anti-static pad. I see a little bit of gunk in there, but there's no actual corrosion. Oh, there's little thermal pads under there. I'm going to clean some of that stuff off with some rubbing alcohol. Oh, look, there's some gunk from the fan. And maybe I will actually try to clean these parts off a little bit while I have it open. We'll do that, and then while we're working on that, we'll let it dry. Alright, so let's unpack this and get to the soldering point. Hold the desoldering point at first. I'm going to take everything off. And then we'll put on the new stuff. points there. What I'm using is a device that heats it up like a solder and then sucks it out like a solder sucker. Uh, I was getting irritated trying to angle it with my previous devices, so let's see if I can do this fine. It should be hot enough now. Let's look at the fun. Alright, after a little bit of struggling, I got all four of those parts out. It looks like the resistor they sent me to replace the one in the F1 mark is a different kind of resistor. So, hopefully everything's okay with that. I shouldn't have to worry about what direction those go in. I believe the only thing I really have to worry about the direction of is the capacitor. I'm not an actual electrician, so I should have probably stated that earlier. So next I'm going to slide one of these in and try to solder it in place. Probably start with this, and I'll make sure everything's okay. Now that I got this on here, I just want to say I'm upset I accidentally singed this a little bit while I was having issues getting the one part out. I also suggest uh, if you do do this on your own personal one from your childhood like I did, definitely try and practice on something else if this is your first time soldering. I am upset that, that happened in general even though I'll never see it. But do that and also probably get some decent parts. Um, 
these, this, well, this is a pretty decent solder. I didn't swap it out for a piece that really matched the size for what I was doing. And this cost me like five bucks, and it does what it does, but it's a little too big for how narrow some of these points are I was trying to get off. Alright, next I gotta clip these little ends here so they don't bump anything else. And then we're gonna clean this out a little bit. And I'm gonna put everything together and see if it works okay. All right, now, pardon my awkward setup, but uh, I originally planned to use my Sony Trinitron monitor and the VGA box for my Dreamcast, but I'm a little tight on time and busy lately. So I figured I'd just plug it into whatever TV I had nearby, and I'll do the VGA box eventually. That's on my list of videos to make, but let's see if everything worked okay. I have everything plugged in. I'm my fingers crossed to make sure I didn't get anything wrong, and we'll see if everything boots up normal. I should be able to set the clock okay from now on. So, I think it's the 10th. I do notice that the light is flickering a little bit, so I think I might have bummed something when I did the replacement. And we'll just go for that time for now. The controller's working just fine also. That was another issue, is for some reason the controller ports weren't working properly. So, I didn't mention it earlier, but that kit did come with those caps and stuff. And I did kind of show it, but I replaced those because I assumed one of them was bad since the controllers were not working on any of the ports properly. I forgot to test the optical drive. This is a burnt copy of the Dream Shell, which is a Linux distribution for the Dreamcast. Primarily used to boot homebrew games and then, you know, game bootlegs and stuff, but I'm, I'm using it for mostly backups and such not. So, I'll probably take this apart and see if I can get that working normal again. But when I started this project, it wasn't working at all. And I assume I got some solder somewhere that's causing it to flicker, or else I bent something slightly out of place. Shouldn't be too hard to fix, so. And bam, we have Dream Shell. So everything's working. The light's a little flickery, but I could live with that for a bit. And I got my original Dreamcast from my childhood pretty much repaired. Now, I'm gonna turn it off and unplug it and plug it back in and make sure that the CMOS keeps the time. So I'd like to thank everybody for watching this video. I know most of you are my personal friends and family and then some of you are strangers or people I know online. Uh, whoever you are, thank you for showing interest viewing this. I know the quality of my videos has not risen as much as I intended by this point, but I still look forward to making more things on stuff in my collection, game stuff and hardware stuff and whatnot. Until next time, everybody enjoy.